What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be doing a review and installation of the Combat Sports Heavy Bag, Double End Bag, Double End Heavy Bag. Uh, that's how they advertise it. It's very similar to the Fighting Sports 3-in-1 Bag. Uh, that was the bag I was initially looking at. People that had reviewed that bag noted that the bag was formed with only four panels, which created a boxy effect to it. This bag doesn't have that. It's done with eight panels, and it is definitely not boxy at all. It, uh, it's very well done, actually. Um, the bag is for, uh, you know, they, they want to call it a double end bag. This is not for, this is not going to replace a double end bag by any means. It, uh, it's a really good bag to use for combinations and uh, for uh, recreating situations, actual situations where you're in here and you work to the inside, mostly uppercuts, you know, working the body. The, uh, the, it's shaped like a Coke bottle, like an upside down Coke bottle, small at the bottom. So that suppose you had, like if you had a person in front of you, you know, and they're in their position and they're here to come to the body, you have more mass here than the body's lower here, which is what this simulates. So this is very good. I've already, I couldn't resist throwing the bag up there. I didn't have what I wanted to, to mount it properly. But I got, I got it started and used it and I've already put a half an hour or so into the bag and it's a lot of fun. It's very effective. I'm really enjoying it. So far it can take a good beating. This is in the bag that you can lean into. It's not gonna replace a standard heavy bag for power punching. So it's not really for power punching, but it's a very useful bag. Um, I recently did a video where I expanded my ceiling mount and showed how I installed it in anticipation. I did that in anticipation of putting this bag and hanging it up. So you see here, I have no springs in line, a bunch of loud, noisy chains, just things that generally I don't like. Uh, so I went to Home Depot and I got about $13 worth of stuff. And I'm gonna go ahead and properly mount this bag to the ceiling and raise it up a little bit. It's a little low for my use. And I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna to use to do that and uh, let you know more of my thoughts on using the bag. So let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so I didn't buy what I needed ahead of time to mount this bag because I didn't know what the bag would come with. The uh, bag came with absolutely nothing. It came with only this heavy duty spring hook and that was it. So that's not sufficient to mount it. What I'll be using is, I won't even be using this hook. Uh, well, maybe I will. But I'll definitely be using this. It's a uh, swivel, eyelet, eye and eye swivel, which I already had. But at the Home Depot, I went and picked up a pair of one and a half inch rings. That was only $1.55. I've got four of these springs. Now on the back, it says they're rated at 61 pounds, but it says for two. So I don't know if each spring is 61 pounds or 61 pounds between the two of them, but the bag only weighs 45. Well, that's what they say. So either way, I have four of the springs for each strap, one for each strap. So that will definitely cover the weight. The springs were only $4 a piece, so those were eight bucks. We've got some spring clips that I may not even need, but better to have them and not need them. And those were $3.98, I'm sorry, uh, $2.36 each. And then just some zip ties and some rope. We're gonna need four of the zip ties to secure it at the top and bottom. It makes it adjustable. The nylon rope I already have. Um, I mean, I've picked up the bag of it for like 10 bucks, which I've already used multiple times. So, like I said, I spent about 12 bucks on this stuff today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay guys, so the first thing I did was I took the springs and I took the rings and I attached two of the springs to one ring and then I took masking tape to run along the uh, hook here to close it so that way it doesn't jostle its way up off of the ring or off the bag attachment. Uh, it's a very simple and effective way to prevent the bag from jostling its way up. If you've ever had a heavy bag at home, I'm sure you've knocked one of the straps loose and it's very frustrating. You don't want to have to stop your workout to take a glove off and try to fix that. And it's like you can avoid that with just tape, simple masking tape. It's very easy to take off if you need to remove it for whatever reason, and it's a cheap, effective way of attaching it. So two springs on one ring, and then another two springs on the other ring. I went with this size of ring to allow the springs to be separate from each other and not 
be right on top of each other like this. So you want to give them room to move for each strap. So it'll look like that. And then from here, I took just a carbiner that I already had laying around, a quick disconnect carbiner, and attached it to the I and I, which this will swivel. And then you just simply do that. So then there, just like that, you have your attachment for the bag. It's got springs on it without a bunch of chains that are gonna make a whole lot of noise and be aggravating. So this is the first thing that you create. Very simple to do. And I'll go ahead and I'm gonna get the rope measured to the length that I want. Get that attached to the top with a spring clip. So once I have the nylon rope hanging from the top from the spring clip all measured and where I want it to be, then I'll just go ahead and attach all of that and then just transfer the bag over one, at a, one ring at a time. So let me go ahead and get started on that. Okay, so I made a couple of cosmetic decisions that I'll go over a little bit later. But for now, uh, I want to show you guys when you're using the nylon rope, if you decide to go with a nylon rope, when you cut it, you can see how it's frayed uh, along the edge here. This is where I cut and you see this is like a gnarled hard lump. Now this is what you want because you don't want all these loose ends. So when you're doing that, you can just, I'm using matches here, but uh, you just use like a uh, lighter, any kind of fire and you see it melting. You see the nylon melting and hardening and I'm gonna have to do this a couple of times because the match just went out. But you're getting the idea. You use the fire to melt and harden this. Just be careful with how you're doing it. You don't wanna do too much of it and this will become a gnarled hardened lump because that's what I did here. I melted it so that way you don't have a bunch of loose strands laying around. And it looks better and it makes it more secure and uh, stronger as a rope. All right, so the end result for the attachment looks like this. You see I've got the springs attached to the rings, which go to this spring hook, which then goes to the swivel, the I and I swivel, which then goes to another spring hook. And then you see I use very little rope. I thought about using just uh, another spring attachment but I like using the rope because it gives you the ability to adjust the height, lower it, raise it if you want to. So two zip ties here, two zip ties here, attaching to this spring hook, which is the one that came with the bag. Now, obviously I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess. There we go. Toss that, and because, again, masking tape, just good for just about everything, because I want it to look nice. I'm going to go ahead and tape all this up. There we go. Now if I need to make an adjustment, that'll be easy to do. So now I'm just going to go ahead and attach this to the ceiling mount and then transfer the bag hooks over and it'll be done. All right, so I got it hung up and we're all set. There's the big hook that came with the bag, the taped over nylon rope from my adjustable length attachment, the spring clip attached to the I and I swivel to another spring clip to the rings. Now I could have gone with larger rings, I wish I had, to allow the springs a little bit more room from each other so they're not right on top of each other but this is acceptable. You definitely don't want to go any smaller than this because the, ring, the springs are going to be right on top of each other. So I wish I had used a slightly larger ring, but that'll do. Uh, I had taped the bottom of the springs here so that way it doesn't jostle out of these hooks. And as a consequence of me using a, not using a larger ring, these triangles are right on top of each other. And I have a thing with the metal on metal noise. So I just use some duct tape these two, you only have to tape one corner. So just as long as it's not metal on metal, it's fine. Duct it's hitting the duct tape corner. And then on the other side, it hits the duct tape corner. So you only got to do one here and then one here, and then you're good. No more noise. And you'll see those springs, I, I think they are rated 65 pounds each because this, they're not even extending. Like uh, the springs on my heavy bag, you can see there in the background, those springs on the heavy bag are just from the bag sitting there are extended. Whereas these are, that's how they look normally. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Now the bag does have an attachment at the bottom. So you do have an option there. 
I'll go ahead and pull this back. Let's come on back here. All right, so. I have the eyelet there in the ground where I could attach to a ring. That's another triangle that's attached to the bottom here to keep it in place. But honestly, I, I wouldn't even recommend using it that way. Very easily done, very easily tethered. Uh, but the real benefit of this bag is its versatility and movement allowing you to work it from different angles, different combinations, hooks. Um, the, uh, it, it can take a beating, but not like a heavy bag is going to. But it'll allow you to work low and then high. And move, uh, move punch, or drive punches in as you're moving across. I have a lot of fun with this bag. I learned there's, there's lots of different ways to use it. It allows you to use a lot of slips, um, a lot of counters. If you're creative and you know what you're doing and you can visualize and picture the punches coming back at you, it allows you to work in a lot of different ways. So all in all, I gotta say I'm really happy with this bag. It's a really good purchase. Again, I like the way it simulates the high and low. This is smaller. It gives you a nice angle with uppercuts. This is good. I like it. This is extremely sturdy mount. Um, probably more than, way more than it needs. I, I definitely could have gone with two springs instead of four, but I like, I like the way that it looks, personally. I like doing things right, and I like the way that that looks. It's very easily taken on and off, too, because this bag can get in the way. I want to be able to easily mount it and dismount it if I want to work on my uh, double end bag. So I could just get something to stay on top of and disconnect it here. And once I have the bag disconnected here, then I can just take the top ring off and then it's done, it's out of the way. It's very easy to put up. And because the bag's only 45 pounds, so it's not as, as much of a uh, hassle to take up and down as it would be like a 100 pound heavy bag. So that's gonna be it for this, again, Real big fan of the combat sports bag so far. I hope you guys like this tutorial. If it's helpful, go ahead and uh, like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next.